Hey everybody, we've got a lot to catch up on, so let's jump right in. I've been getting several questions on different topics, although they are very much related. So let's start off with the sad news. This week I sold my Zine 24 millimeter cine lens. It is a very sad day, I know. I loved that lens very much. It was excellent piece of gear to have. And you might be asking, what am I gonna do now that I don't have my cine lens? Well, actually, that leads me to my next point. Before I get to that point though, I will be selling a lot of gear, including my Pocket 6K camera body, as well as my Portkeys LH5P wireless controlled monitor, uh, my map box, pretty much everything you see on this rig. I will be selling those elements as well as a few other pieces of gear like my almost brand new MacBook Pro, fully maxed out. I'll put a link down below to my website where you can check out the prices and buy them instantly if you choose or hit me up on my DMs, go over to Instagram and message me there and we can work out pricing and shipping, etc. I've got a lot of great small rig accessories, etc. A lot of stuff. So feel free to hit me up if there's something you're looking for, let me know. I've probably got something laying around here, a little bit of everything. Check that out, thank you. So now on to the main point. Why am I selling my Blackmagic 6K? And why am I switching over to Sony completely? We all know the selling points of the Pocket 6K and the subsequent models, the 6K Pro, the 6K Gen 2. First and foremost being the price tag, which pretty much justifies every other feature that they offer, such as the 6K raw footage, internal neutral density filters on the 6K Pro, internal body stabilization on the 6K G2, and also the tilting screen on the 6K Pro. A a lot of great features for the money. It's really a smart choice and I really do love this camera. You all know that I've been a fan of the 6K ever since I bought one, ever since they came out. Love this camera. It was in fact so good that I thought it was just too good to be true. Not to say that it actually was too good to be true because it really has been an incredible camera. But what I found personally is that it's not the direction I want to go with my equipment and it's not personally what I need or what works best for my needs. In the past year I found myself preferring the features and functions of my Sony. Those particular features being fast autofocus, really autofocus at all, internal body stabilization, which is huge, quickly switching to shoot photos, that's a, that's a big need that I have, as well as the size, the compact size of my Sony rig, and it yields incredible results, even for a five-year-old camera, I have the R3. Not to mention all the other incredible features about Sony in general that just make you love Sony and make it worth switching back over to that platform completely. Now with the release of Sony's most affordable CineLine camera, the FX30, it's really a no brainer for me because of all of those features that I mentioned that I mostly am looking for and looking to use with the one exception of internal raw recording. It really does just make sense for me to switch over as I've already got e-mount glass and it's just the best switch for me right now. Now saying that I'm switching, I wanna clarify, I have absolutely enjoyed working with the 6K. I've really enjoyed to get to know people who have the 6K, who've been shooting with 6K and just been interacting with me on my channel about the 6K. I've really loved that. I'm really excited about the content that the FX30 is gonna actually allow me to do that I wouldn't be able to do with a big cinema rig. I can't do a lot of handheld run and gun stuff with my cinema rig. So I'm looking forward to the compact size and functionality of the FX30. Now, because I'm switching platforms, there will inevitably be some new gear reviews that will come along on my channel. I'm sure that companies will wanna send me some gear to try out with the FX30 as it's a brand new, very economic option for most videographers out there, vloggers alike, it's just, you can't beat the price and what you get. And because I'll be doing a lot of new reviews and I'll be receiving a lot of free gear to try out, I've been getting questions lately of actually, how do you get free gear on YouTube? Which is a great question and I believe it's one that's worthy of diving into a bit. Now it's not as difficult as it might seem. You might be overthinking this, you might be thinking, wow, I need to put my name out there, send some emails to some companies, or just be lucky enough to get a viral video and score some free gear. No, it's actually not that difficult. The first piece of gear that I reviewed 
came because I reviewed a similar piece of gear that I already purchased. Now, it wasn't like I just threw a video together, threw it up and hoped for something. My, well, that was not my goal. My goal was film with excellence, a gear review that is useful to others. If that is your goal and that's the goal that you actually achieve, companies are gonna notice that and they're going to want to send you gear to review. So as you start out in your pursuit of getting free gear from YouTube. As I know, there are many of you out there. I mean, who doesn't like to get free gear? I know that I am really excited when I get an email on my inbox in the morning from a Chinese company that wants to send me free gear. That's just fun. That's exciting. Not to mention, it's something that you can actually use as a tool in your projects. But my encouragement to those of you looking to get into that, just simply make quality content about something you already own. It can literally be anything. It can be a small light, it can be a small microphone. It doesn't have to be anything big. You don't have to review the camera. You don't have to review the big light or the new lens. Start small with your basic, an on-camera monitor is a perfect place to start. I think I've received four or five different monitors now over the last few years, just because I reviewed the very first monitor that I had. Now, when a company does hit you up and let's say it's something you're not terribly interested, but it does pertain to your channel or somehow you are interested in that, just not necessarily with your channel. Do not turn those offers down just because it's not the thing you expect. Don't expect to receive the newest Sony camera right away. Start small, say yes to those, get your content out there, produce a lot of different reviews. After a while, they're gonna see and they're gonna notice and they're, gonna, they're going to say, hey, this guy's putting in an effort to." actually give an honest review on this piece of gear, let's send him something. In my case, that has happened multiple times. There have been a few things that I didn't particularly want to review, but I said, sure, you know what? I'll give it a chance. One in particular was a small coffee maker. Now I didn't actually do a video review. It was more, they were looking for photos, less video, but I said, hey, you know what? I'll give it a mention in a video if you'll send it to me. So they did, I had a free coffee maker, Super cool. So don't turn down the small offers. Now what happens when you do start to get the bigger equipment? I do have to say more is going to be required of you as far as your quality in order to even retain certain companies. There are a few companies that have consistently come back to me and said, will you try out our gear? We really appreciate the way you do your videos, the way you have presented our items, even the good and the bad and they have returned and given me multiple free pieces of gear. As that dollar amount goes up with each piece of gear, increase your quality with it, spend a little more time, a few extra hours on that video than you normally would. They're gonna see that, they're gonna like that, and they're gonna come back to you. And lastly, this kind of goes with the last point, but don't be afraid to branch out. If it doesn't necessarily fit your brand or your channel, don't be afraid to try something out like a software or a coffee maker, or maybe some company sees the way you dress, they like the way you dress and they wanna send you a sweater. Why not try it? If you're not interested in doing a full review, you can at least offer to mention it in the video and put a link in your video. That's something that sometimes appeases the manufacturers. So those are the ways that I found are really helpful to get free gear on YouTube. I hope that's helpful to you as you pursue that. And I wish you the best of luck in doing so. I think there's a lot of great new companies coming out with some new tech that is just gonna be awesome. As I make my switch over to Sony, thank you to all of my subscribers who have followed along for the Blackmagic. I will actually be doing some more Blackmagic videos on new releases, but the 6K story for me is over. Thank you all for following. I hope you continue to follow. Those of you who are, who are here for the first time, please hit like and subscribe. It would really help out my channel and use the Amazon links below as that, as that also supports me and my family. Thank you all for watching and I'll see you next time.